Um, so I'm going to, I'm really excited to introduce our next speakers here. Um, so first up, we have Jacqueline Chung, who is the co-founder of International Hub. Jacqueline is on a mission to empower those around her to implement technologies to opt op optimize processes and raise awareness of social issues. Jacqueline's curiosity and drive for innovation support societal change collaboratively. She's an advocate of sustainability, mental health, and diversity in the STEM fields, and her philanthropy work ranges from planning environmental initiatives to researching the effects of mental health on startups. Um, she's continuously volunteering her time to consult for nonprofits within the community. So welcome, Jacqueline. We're so happy to have you join us. Uh, in, or, uh, in conversation with Jacqueline will be her co-founder of International Hub, Deborah Mepiaida. I'm so sorry if I'm butchering your last name, apologies. Um, Deborah is on a mission to make the world a better place through technology. She uses her skills in software, web development, and UI UX design to create memorable user experiences for others. So I'm going to turn the stage over to both of you, um, and I'm super excited and eager to hear more about International Hub, um, as well as this community that you've created. So take it away. Awesome. Thank you for that introduction. Thanks, Meg. So I'm so excited to be here with Jacqueline and Deborah. I am your moderator, Narupa Netram. Um, let's start by le learning a little bit more about each of you and what led you to start the International Hub. Um, okay, I guess um, I could kick it off. Um, so a bit about me. So I guess um, as for start the start of like starting international hub um I, I would say like one thing that led us to it is um we just found that like Jacqueline and myself were involved in like a lot of like communities um that really helped us to grow professionally so with being involved with that we noticed a lot of our friends didn't know much about the different opportunities there were like for example like events hackathons um, all sorts of things to basically help you grow professionally um, and then we wanted to create a newsletter uh, to kind of help gather all those kinds of opportunities and share them with others but it didn't really make sense because like a lot of people already had that in existence um, so then that's kind of like how the idea of um, a database started so basically um, international hub um, basically we're a community and a database and our goal is to, to support um, international students to basically achieve their dream careers. So initially we started off with a database and we wanted to just centralize all sorts of opportunities from different parts of the world to help people grow professionally. And then it eventually grew into an international community um, of about like 1,200 students um, about now. Um, yeah, so basically like the main focus of it was just to like help our friends essentially to like get access to opportunities they might not be aware of. Um, and then it just kind of grew from there to, yeah, other things we discovered and other opportunities to um, support others. Um, yeah, that's kind of how, yeah, that's basically the backstory of it. And I don't know if you have anything to add, Jacqueline. Yeah, uh, well, to just introduce myself a little bit more, um, I also, same, like, idea with that was, like, I was just, like, a part of different communities, and, and it felt like it was just very decentralized. Um, so we just wanted to make it more effortless for people to find opportunities through the database, but also provide that community aspect because of the pandemic. Um, so for me, that's been like really important just to support like other international students who are looking for jobs because especially with the pandemic, it's like a lot harder to find suitable opportunities where they actually get sponsorships or there's networking opportunities with those companies. So that's uh, what I would say, why I, I decided to start it with Deborah. Thank you so much. That was really great information. And as we're hearing from you, we want to encourage the audience to feel free to drop your questions in the chat to the right, because our wonderful speakers are going to be taking questions live. So as I listen to you, one of the things I think about is why do you think international students face problems coping with the local environment? So I definitely think that because of um, like the cultural like differences, like especially for international students, like if they're like, for example, they come from like India and they come here, like, first of all, it's just like culture shock. And 
they don't really understand like you know what are the the societal norms or like um you know potentially like the work culture is different academics like how you study is different um so it's just like an adjustment from there and then when they come here they don't really have that network like that network that like supported people who are already born in Canada um and so they struggle more with like being able to network with the right employers and uh, which events to go to are uh, which ones are like most worthwhile and then because of this it causes them to be isolated from their peers or from professional other like professionals and employers so they don't have that community aspect uh, when they're trying to network or get a job and then the last thing is like with the international students like there is like the international center but they don't have like all the support that like that constant support um for just like regular things like even just like applying for the right job portals like there is certain portals that allow you to use that allow you to know what companies like actually sponsor visas and there's ones that just you don't know at all until you actually get into the process so I feel like there's not enough support in the recruitment aspect of it, mostly just in the academic aspect of it. Um, when it comes to like career counseling, it's a lot more like general and not like catered towards the international students' needs. So that's why I feel like those are like the main like problems that international students face when they come into like a new country um, or with the local environment. Deborah, did you have anything to add? Um, no, I think uh, Jacqueline covered the main things. Um, I think like, yeah, community is a big thing. Because uh, like generally, I guess speaking from experience, um, I did exchange um, in the UK for a bit. And um, I remember when I initially got there, I was like, first of all, just getting used to the culture, getting used to the education system. And then I had like nobody, I think the only people I had were like my flatmates who lived with me. So um if not for them, I would have been like very lost and like had a hard time. Um, and I got some support from the school as well. But like, I feel like sometimes that support is just limited. And when you get to a new country, it's also nice to connect to people who live there. Um, so you not having that community can be tough for you to adjust. Um, so I feel like community is like a big piece in that. Let's talk more about that. What is the International Hub doing to support international students in Canada? You know, it might be helpful for us to know, can anybody join? I know you're both based in Toronto. Is the International Hub only for Ontario students? You know, if, if you could tell us more about those things. Yeah, um, yeah, so we're doing many um, different things. Uh, first of all, like, Right now, our community is made up of like international students from like different parts of the world. Um, so it's not, I wouldn't say like it's restrictive. Like our, our target, like we're mainly focusing on like international students in Canada, um, helping them to prov like providing them with the resources they need to, um, to like grow professionally and get a job in tech specifically. Um, but at the same time, it doesn't mean that like other people aren't welcome. Like we, the resources, like in our community, we provide like all sorts of resources. Um, so uh, for example, we do like uh, webinars, like we do events and recently, or a couple months ago, we had like a career series, um, career, I think it was like a yeah, career development series where we had someone talk about like what it's like after you graduate and like how to be the best like in your job and then um, the other one was about visas so we provide that kind of content and it really caters to like anybody who honestly like might be international not international um, so in that aspect like I guess the international piece would be the visa um, so we cater more to like international students particularly but we do provide content that like is really focused on like career development like for example even like um resume reviews we did that as well and then we want to dive more into like mentorship um so yeah so those are some things we're doing to um to support students yeah. Jacqueline anything to add no I think Deborah covered it <laughs> all right I just want to make sure I give you equal <laughs> yeah for sure um, 
so we're still in the midst of a pandemic. How is the International Hub helping international students cope with the COVID restrictions of all these different countries? Which seem to be changing. Yeah, for sure. So like, um, kind of bouncing off more of what Deborah was saying with like our online community. So right now we use like, um, like this platform called Ladder and it's like a professional network platform that has like other communities like entrepreneurship, women in tech, uh, like social impact, things like that. And so we're just one of like the communities under Ladder. And so what we do to like kind of overcome those barriers of like COVID restrictions is like really leveraging that online aspect. So like having online events, um, online like meetups, uh, we try to like form like individual like groups with people who wanna learn like a new language um, or in like certain areas of like the world. So like there would be like a Canadian group chat. Um, so that kind of allows them to be like more connected. And we just want to leverage like all these different like online platforms to like build up that community so that students are able still like are still able to like communicate with each other and like connect with each other. And then the other thing that we hope to do like more in the future is like doing more events that support students during this time like with COVID because um, like there's a lot of issues with like visas you know, getting canceled or it's a lot harder to get visas, like going to like the U.S. or like abroad because you're not able to actually like apply for them because of COVID. And um, there's also like that, like there's certain visas that have like lottery systems. So you have to have like a certain degree. So there's so many different like regulatory like uh, nuances to it that like I feel like it's important to have some like events or information uh, our education around it for the community members. So we're hoping to like do more education around that in the future. So uh, that's how International Hub is trying to support like international students during the pandemic. Great. Um, you know, that's the immigration keeps changing as well, right? Immigration restrictions and COVID restrictions. So I'm, I'm glad to hear that you're doing all these things to support these communities. Yeah, definitely. Being in big corporations, do you think each of you had an advantage over international students? Um, I think I personally, I, I feel like, um, I feel like because we're like in big corporations, it definitely does help with like, I guess, differentiating ourselves. Like, let's say if we, like us being based in Canada, we want to like get a job in the U.S. Um, it would help in the, in that sense because we are it's like a we're in like a global company, um, and in that way, like another part of the world, they would recognize. Oh, I know this company, and like it's good credibility on us. Um, but I wouldn't say like I, I I think like we still like have the same um, barriers that like other students have. Um, I think like when it comes to visas, like that's uh, one big thing and like the whole like visa process and um, like I guess for me, it is a bit uh, quicker for me to get a visa because I think for me because I'm in um, stuff more related to like software engineering so like more coding, so it'd be more like a TN visa and that looks a bit different um, and also being like a Canadian citizen like that helps, um, but generally like I feel like other than that, um, I think visas could be a challenge for us as well, um, depending on like the type of company or the type of visa we need. Um, and uh, I, I would also say, yeah, I would say like that's that's the main thing. Um, I don't know, I think it's sort of like half and half because in a sense we do have an advantage with working in a global company, but at the same time, um, there are sometimes like little like barriers in the in the recruitment process that um, that like affect us as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. I just wanted to add a little bit on top of that. So yeah, like for me, like right now I'm working at Microsoft and I'm working in like the Toronto office. So I think because I'm a Canadian citizen, it was just it's easier to find a job and get interviews for like Canadian roles, which makes sense. Um, so like, but applying for like the U.S. is 
it's still a challenge even for a Canadian citizen, even though we have the T, like the TN, um, and the, like the H1B, like visas that we could potentially get. It's just a, like some of it's a lottery system. Sometimes it's just like very finicky because of like all the regulations and like COVID and everything like that. Like, is it actually worth to hire someone like outside of the U.S. if you already have someone locally? So th- it brings up a lot of like, I guess, questions of like, oh, is that fair? You know, like immigrants or like uh, people internationally versus those who are local. Um, but I definitely think like working at a bigger company gives you at least like like a foot in the door so that like you could potentially like transfer into like the country that you want to go so for example if I want to go to the U.S. maybe if I continue like working at Microsoft eventually I can like transfer over to the U.S. because I have the connections um, or it's just like easier because you can get like an L2 visa Um, so there's like options so I would definitely like recommend like international students who want to like apply um internationally to like work at bigger companies or apply for bigger companies because there's just it's just easier to like navigate the visa system because they've already done it and and you can also like transfer it to like another country if you need to it is we have so much work to do to be truly remote right we need to be internationally remote One of the things I hear you both talking about is the importance of networks and communities. What are some of the ways that students, international students in our audience today can have confidence to leverage their networks? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great question. So I would say that like for me personally, I use like, I'm in a part of a lot of like Slack, Facebook, Discord communities. So, like, for example, like, Product Buzz, Design Buddies, um, like, Intern Club, and even, like, Ladder itself, they have, like, a bunch of different networks. And then my LinkedIn, uh, like, has been, like, super helpful. So, I would say, like, really leverage those social networks and, like, slowly build up kind of that job-ready network so that, like, if you're ever looking for a job, you can always, like, message different people, like, oh, you know, I was really interested in this role, like, do you have anything available? Or, like, this is my background and this is my experience. So, like, would you have any roles related to this? So, like, I think, like, building up that network and, like, kind of following up with people and, and connecting with different people, whether it's, like, cold calling or through, like, a warm introduction, I think it's important to be consistent and also, like, diligent about it because you're not going to get, like, a good network overnight. It takes, like, years to, like, build it up and, like, eventually people will feel comfortable, like, referring you for jobs. So that's, that's what I would do if you're like an international student trying to like build up your community. It's just like be consistent and be diligent about it. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, I have some stuff to add to that as well. Like um, I think, yeah, building on uh, what Jacqueline mentioned. Uh, yeah, I think, yeah, networking is a big piece. Um, so just really being like involved and like um, things like, she mentioned like joining communities um, and like not just going to communities, but really like generally connecting with people there as well, because communities are a good way to meet like minded people um, and like also grow with them. Um, another thing is that what I found is that communities usually have um, sometimes they provide like sponsorship. So like like, uh, for example, they partner with a company and then. The company is the company will, is willing to like review certain resumes, people's resumes, or um, or like they might have uh, an opportunity for you to just get your resume directly submitted to the recruiter. Um, so, like for me, those things have helped me, and like um, they've leveraged, helped me leverage, um, helped me leverage uh, my yeah the community to basically grow uh, professionally. Um, and also just to get my foot in the door when it comes to like interviewing and such. Um, and then also another thing is like about coffee chats. I think a lot of people are just nervous about that. And like, I know, like when I started, like I was definitely nervous. Like I going to career fairs was intimidating for me or like um, just going to like those like networking nights where you just kind of like stand there. And you're like, oh, I don't know what to say. Or like, um, yeah, you just don't know how to get the conversation started. But I like one thing I've found is just as you do more of it, the more comfortable you get, you just have to like do that first one and then the second one. And then you kind of get into the groove of things. 
Um, and also, I think like when you go into those talks, um, just like generally find people that you want to connect with. Um, so really like maybe doing a bit of research about them ahead of time, coming prepared with questions um, so that like your conversation, like it's not just like stale and it's like, oh, just that awkward silence for a good one minute. Um, but rather like just kind of building off your conversation with them, keeping the conversation going, asking genuine questions um, that like, I think it really builds your like uh, interpersonal skills um, and also makes you more comfortable talking to people. And um, another thing I found to be helpful is like uh, usually when I let's say I'm looking for an internship or full time role or like generally I just I'm interested in a certain company. I usually reach out um, to someone who works there and like just like have a conversation with them. Like, what is your day to day work like? Um, and like just learning more about the company as well. And like if if so, like if you feel comfortable, you could ask them for a referral. But generally, it's usually better to go with someone who knows more about your background. Um, but if you want to do it, it's worth a shot. Um, but generally, yeah, just like having those conversations with them and just seeing where it goes because it helps you to learn about the company, um, improves your skills, and just like um, also just like really gets you prepared. And like, who knows if the person is willing to refer you, it could eventually land you an interview or a job. So yeah, so those are some things that like have like helped me and hopefully helps students listening as well. Yes, it's so important to reach out to folks, you know, what's the most they can say, I, I don't want to talk to you, but I find people are wanting to talk and finding the ways, things you have in common and ways you can help one another. So I appreciate you both sharing that. Let us know what's next for the International Hub. What's next? Well, <laughs> that's a loaded question. Um, I think yeah, I guess um, I, I could get started answering this one. Um, yeah, for us, uh, we're really just trying to understand um, international students and their pain points. Um, and then from there, kind of allow that to really drive like what value we provide for them. So like in the future, we do want to like run more events, uh, whether it be like social or like more professional events. Um, we want to like start to like also we're, we're, we are starting to identify um, ways that we can provide value. So apart from those two things I mentioned, just like finding other ways to support them. Um, also, we want to definitely grow our community more. So reaching more students um, within Canada and then hopefully like even other students, international students from different parts of the world. Um, and also just like revamping ourselves, like our brand, um, improving our brand, uh, and like revamping our website so that people can learn more about us and understand the kind of value we bring and how we can help them. Um, yeah, and I don't know if you have anything to add, Jacqueline. Um, yeah, we, we just want to emphasize like kind of a regular like feedback loop with our members so that we're like trying to personalize it to their experiences. So like our team has been like really great with like setting up like you know, user interviews and understanding like what are the needs of the community and like just like understanding like the trends within like the recruitment process as well has been like really big, a uh, big part of how we conduct like our community. So we're hoping like in the future, we want to continue like providing more like personalized, like one-on-one -on -one or like more intimate like group experiences for our community. Great. And how can the Power to Fly community support you all? I know you've dropped um, contact information in the chat, but I also want to get you a chance to address that verbally on how we can support the great work that you're doing. Yeah, for sure. So definitely, like, you know, follow us on Instagram, LinkedIn, um, at International Hub. And then you can also, if you want to, like, get in contact with us, in terms of like partnerships or you have like specific questions, you can email us at opportunitycollab at gmail.com. And then if you have any like recruitment questions, like for me or like Deborah, you can connect with us on LinkedIn. So you can see like our name, <laughs> like in background, you can yeah, just like type that in and then you'll find us. 
Um, so there are, there's a lot of ways that you can get in contact with us. Um, definitely check out our website um, if you just want to like learn more about International Hub and join the community if you have questions as an international student. Great. Deborah? Yeah, I would say um, those are the main things. Um, if you go to our website, you'll be able to see uh, basically like all these links, um, like a link to the joining the community and a link to the database. Um, and I also say like uh, sharing it, like if you know uh, of any like international students or just anyone who would benefit um, from like the work we're doing, um, feel free to share with them as well. Great. And just to our audience, feel free to ask those questions. We do want to hear from you. Deborah and Jacqueline, I, I wanted to ask yourself, I mean, you're doing amazing work, each of you. So kudos for that. Where do you see yourselves in this work in five years? Um, I would smiling, so that's good. Yeah, like I would definitely like you mean like specifically for international help right or do you just mean in general you can share both okay so for me international hub like i hope that will like continue to grow our community and provide like more services you know like i have like a good suite of like coaches or mentors in our roster and then also I would like to like see us like have more partnerships with like various international networks or employers so that they can like host like events with international students so that like the students can, you know, build up their network and actually like get jobs from like the events or our community. So I would really just like to see a lot of like con like conversions for like international students to become like interns or um, like new grads, um, like through our community. And then personally, like, um, I like, I like, I think being an entrepreneur is like really fun and like, and like fast paced and like, there's just a lot of unknowns. So I would definitely want to like, you know, continue being like an entrepreneur um, in some aspect um, and just like support the community however I can through like, uh, various like social causes like sustainability mental health and diversity um, along with like international hub so that's 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 where I see myself going in like the next five years it's pretty big but like <laughs> I just wanted to be like within that realm oh that's great to know how about you Deborah? um yeah for me yeah I think uh with things with what Jacqueline mentioned about international hub I echo all of that um I think like our desire is really just to help other students just to like land the internship land their, their dream internships land their dream jobs um and actually like help um reduce like the amount of hurdles they have as international students and allow them to like explore and work in different parts of the world basically so definitely I would love like to see a lot of people just that happen for a lot of people um a lot for a lot of students um, and yeah, and then I also say, I like, I definitely do see myself continuing to build international hub. Um, I feel like it's, we started this just like, I don't know, it's just like a very simple conversation and it just blew up into like a full team and, um, we've come so far. So I feel like I definitely see us even going further. And a lot of things have validated this as well with, um, even just being part of this conference. Um, and then as for like, personally, I would say, I would love to like, yeah, continue being an entrepreneur. Um, who knows, maybe this will completely like become a company, international help become a company of our own. Um, we'll see where that goes. Um, but generally like, continue being, being involved in entrepreneurship and then uh, also leading like other uh, developers. So maybe being a director or something uh, because like I work in as a developer um, right now. So yeah, that's kind of where I see myself. Great. I'm now gonna turn it back over to Meg. Thank you so much, Niropa. That was great. I was really, um, it was really awesome to get to sit in on that conversation with, with all of you. That was really amazing. And I'm very excited for the work that you're doing um, and how you're, you're helping um, students now to, to, like you said, really connect with those internships and like, you know, take advantage of all the opportunities they have, but also kind of identify some of the pain points that a lot of students um, experience. So thank you for that. 